Trouble so hard, ooh, Lord, my trouble so hard. Don't nobody know my trouble but God. Don't nobody know my trouble but God. There were some white control newspapers who felt that I was railroaded. I remember one of them stated that my troubles began when I stepped on the toes of France and Great Britain, and that it was a very grave question whether justice had been in my case. After I was found guilty, they released me on $25,000 bail pending the hearing of the appeal. And while waiting, I formed the Black Cross Navigation and Trading Company, business enterprises which comprised the Negro Factories Cooperation, the Black Eagles Flying Corps, dress and millinery shops, a publishing company and printing plant, a phonograph company, a restaurant, laundries, a black doll factory, a hotel, a chain of grocery stores, and the Royal African Motor Corps, a fleet of moving vans. Mr. Garvey, why would you want to stand up to a great republic like America? We're not fighting America. We're not fighting this great government. Then what are you doing? We're fighting hypocrisy and lies. Attorney Matuck asked the jury, quote, Gentlemen, will you let the tiger loose? What's your reaction? Guilty men are afraid of jail. I'm as much at home in jail for the cause of human rights as I am in my drawing room. Well, what did you think of Mr. Dancy's testimony? Mr. Dancy was used by this government to testify against me. You heard him when the prosecutor asked him whether any of the letters were from the Black Star Line. He couldn't remember. He couldn't remember. Mr. Dancy can't read. My life is at stake and he couldn't remember. What happened in that courtroom was a charade. You all know he was just lying through his teeth. The National Association for the Advancement of Certain, uh, I mean, of Colored People and others who have combined to fight the UNIA are going to be disappointed. But they cannot harm Marcus Garvey. Not Judge Mack, not J. Edgar Hoover, not W.E.B. Du Bois and his Blue Vein Society, nobody. The history of the movement is now being written. Do you know what history means? History is the guidepost of a race. It is the inspiration for succeeding generations either to go forward or stand still, either to revenge or be revenged. I had a motive and a purpose. It was a crying voice from the grave that said, We have suffered for 250 years for your day and time. We expect something of you at this hour. The prejudice against us as an African people is not because of color, it's because of our condition. If we must have justice, we must be strong. If we must be strong, we must come together. If we must come together, we can only do so through the system of organization. But to fight for African redemption does not mean that you must be disloyal to any government or country wherein you were born. It is not our purpose or intention to send all black people back to Africa, no! Those of us who leave America, to go settle permanently in Africa will become pioneers, pilgrim fathers of the new nation. The African race became strong in Africa, it could be strong everywhere. For 250 years, we have struggled under the burden and rigors of slavery. We were brutalized, we were maimed, we were killed, we were ravaged in every way. We are men, we have hopes, we have passions, we have feelings, we have desires just like any other race. The cries raised all over the world of Canada for the Canadians, of America for the Americans, of England for the English, of France for the French, of Germany for the Germans. Do you think it unreasonable that we, the blacks of the world, should raise a cry of Africa for the Africans? We are men, human beings, capable of the same acts as any other race, possessing under fair circumstances the same intelligence as any other race. Africa's been sleeping, not dead, only sleeping. Today, Africa is walking around not only on our feet, but on our brains. You can enslave as was done for 300 years the bodies of men. You can shackle the hands of men. You can shackle the feet of men. bodies of men. But you cannot shackle or imprison the minds of men. If any leadership that teaches you to depend upon another race is a leadership that will enslave you. Let me say that again. Any leadership 
that teaches you to depend upon another race is a leadership that will enslave you. When the history of my suffering is complete, future generations shall have in their hands the guide by which they shall know the sins of the 20th century. I know and I know you to believe in time, but we shall wait patiently for 200 years if need be to face our enemies through our posterity. After my enemies are satisfied, in life or death I shall come back to serve even as I served before. In life I shall be the same, in death I shall be a terror to the foes of African liberty. Than me to be the real Marcus Garvey I would like to be. If I may come in an earthquake or a cyclone or a plague or pestilence or as God would have me, then be assured that I shall never desert you and make your enemies triumph over you. If I should die in prison in Atlanta, my work shall not only just begin, but I shall live in the physical or the spiritual to see the day of Africa's glory. When I am dead, wrap the mantle of the red, the black and the green around me, for in the new life I shall rise up with God's grace and blessings to lead the millions up the heights of triumph in the colors that you well know. Look for me in the world when I a storm, look for me all around you, for I shall come back and bring with me countless millions of black slaves who have died in America, who have died in the West Indies, and millions who have died in Africa to aid you in the fight for liberty, freedom, and life. The world today has gone drunk and crazy with its power, and by such true injustice, fraud, and lies have crushed the unfortunate. But if I'm crushed by the system of influence and misdirected, Power, my car shall rise again to plague the conscience of the corrupt. For this I'm happy to suffer and even die. For I will write the history for the millions that are coming and leave the posterity to reckon with the host for the deeds of their fathers. Being at present scientifically the weaker race in your homes and everywhere possible, you must teach the higher development of science to your children and be sure to develop a race of scientists par excellence. For in science and religion lies our only hope to withstand the evil designs of modern materialism. Never forget your God. Remember we live, work and pray for the establishing of a great and binding racial hierarchy. The founding of a racial empire whose only natural, spiritual and political limits shall be God and Africa at home and abroad. Because we are descendants of a suffering people. We are the descendants of a people determined to suffer no longer. Many men and women as black as I am and even more so had believed themselves white under the West Indian Arab society. I was simply an impossible man to use openly the term Negro, yet everyone beneath his breath was calling the black man a nigger. I had to decide whether to please my friends and be one of the black whites of Jamaica and be raised in every prosperous or come out openly and help improve and protect the integrity of the black millions and suffer. I decided to do the latter. There is no future for people who deny their past. My foreparents, my grandparents, my mother, my father did not suffer and die to give me an education to slight, oppress, or discourage my people. Whatsoever education I acquired out of their sacrifice of over 300 years, I shall use for the salvation of the 400 million black people in the world. And the day when I forsake my people, may God Almighty say there shall be no more light for you. I unequivocally rejected the racist assumption of much white American Christianity. Namely, the God who created a black man inferior, that he had intended Negroes to be a servant class, you as a wooden draws of water. I predicated my view of man in the doctrine of Imago Dei. All men, regardless of color, were created in the image of God. From this premise followed the equality of all men and the brotherhood of all men. The biblical injunction of Acts 17.26 reminds us that he created of one blood all nations of men to dwell on the face of the earth. I was most interested in brotherhood within his own race, because if Negroes are created in God's image and Negroes are black, then God must, in some sense, be black. The white world has always tried to rob and discredit us of our history. They tell us that Tutankhamun, the king of Egypt who reigned about the year 1350 BC, was not a black man that the ancient civilization of Egypt and the pharaohs was not of our race. But that does not make the truth unreal. The history of impartial mind knows that we once ruled the world. When white men were savages and barbarians living in caves, thousands of our professionals at that time taught in the universities of Alexandria, then the seat of learning. Ethiopia shall stretch forth our hands unto God, and princes shall come out of Egypt. No black man shall be truly respected until the race as a whole has emancipated itself through self-achievement and progress from universal prejudice. He has to build his own government, industry, art, science, literature and culture before the world will stop to consider him. Were I alive today, 
I would still recommend the same remedy for my people's uplift. Self-esteem, self-respect, and self-reliance in a world gone crazy with individualism. I never taught racism, but rather dignity and pride in one's race. With God's dearest blessings, I'll leave you for a while. One love.